Now let us try to study the uh, other part on this. And you see that the, there is some symmetry here. So if you replace E and P, you will have the same tr structure, only difference a factor of C square. So what I am going to do, uh, I am trying to do express one of them in a more detail and we will put this to the um, some tensor form. So let us pick up this E and that term. Actually these two terms are symmetric with this as I said. On the left hand side we have the change of the momentum mechanical linear momentum and we have the change of the momentum of the electromagnetic fields. And if you have a E and H, you have the momentum of the electromagnetic fields. If you have a E and H, you don't have the momentum of the uh, fields. So I will quietly discuss why we need the, the momentum of the fields a little bit later. So let us work on with the two terms over there. Let us pick up the two terms with the electric fields. So one, one term is E divergence of E and the other term minus E cross curl of E. So I want to put this term is a convenient form. So let me consider to the X term. X term is the first term, X, Y, Z, one, two, three. So if you want to write this equation, basically these two terms which I told you and Again, for B fields, they are symmetric. The last term goes to the left, and we have on the left hand side time derivative of the momentum for the mechanical and the for the fields. For the right hand side, there are a bunch of things, and what are those things? We are going to investigate. So, X component of the field E1 and divergence of E is a scalar, that is del E1 over del x1, del e2 over del x2, del e3 over del x3. Okay, this is the x component of the first term. So look at the x component of this uh, second term. So you have the two cross products there, curl and the cross product. So basically, if you look at this carefully, that is nothing but E2 del E2 over del X1 del E1 over del X2. What is this term? Del E2 over del X1 minus del E1 over del X2. Curl of E, which component? E, which component should be? 1, 2, 3, which component of this curl? 3, 3, yes. That is the third component of this. This is the second component of the E. And the other term should be what? E3, E3 and uh, E2, uh, second component of the curl. Second of the component of the curl. And it is equal to del E1 over del x3 minus del e3 over del x1. So let us try to write everything now. So these two terms on the integral, we are trying to understand what is this. You have that term, you can write del 
over x1 e1 square. What is this? 2 e1 del e1 over del x1. But there is here uh, only one. So subtract one term, one half term here. Say minus 1 over 2 del over del x1 e1 square. So I am writing in this way because I, what I know what I am going to do at that. Okay, these two corresponds to the first one. Okay, 2 e1 del e1 over x1 minus 1, 2 divided by 1 half 1. That brings us this first term. Okay, so let us look at the others. Pick up this term and pick up this term. So all of 2 is nothing but del over del x2 e1 times e2. Okay? So that is e1 times del e2 over del x2. This is that term. And minus minus plus e2 times del e1 over del x2. Yes, there are here. So two terms is there. Okay. So let us pick up another two terms. Another two terms could be this one. And that one. That is equal to del over del x3 e1 e3. So what is this? e1 times del e3 over x3, that term, plus e3 times del e1 over del x3, that term. So what is left over? This is left over. And this is left over, and they are nothing but e2 square plus e3 square. So the one term is here, and the other term is here. They are all minus derivative of the e2 square with respect to the x1, 2 times e2 del e2 over del x1 cancel out 1 over 2 and you can obtain that. Okay, this is the format we have it at the moment. So basically we obtain for the E divergence of E minus E cross curl of E for alpha component, alpha could be x, y, z, could be written as in the following. Summation of beta 1, 2, 3, del x beta e alpha e beta minus 1 over 2 e dot e chronicle delta alpha beta. So what I am saying that for any alpha x, y, z I can write this. So is it true? Let us check. For alpha equal to 1, beta could be 1, 2, 3. Look at here. For beta is 1, that will be e1 square. For beta equal to 2, e2 square. And for beta 3, that will be e3 square. And Okay, for alpha 1, E1, 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 for dummy index beta 1, 2, 3, we will obtain the above. Okay? Did you see all? And for the other one, for alpha and beta are the same, you will have uh, what? E1 square, E2 square, and e3 square and that could be taken with respect to the derivative could be taken with respect to beta.
for alpha and beta equal to each other this is equal to 1 therefore that should be del over del x1 so e1 square ey plus ey square plus ez square when alpha is different than beta that, will, that term will be true so we write the, this term for any alpha as a derivative of some tensor so some tensor in general is called as a Maxwell stress tensor. So did you get this algebra? Any question? So So this is The following so del over del x beta e alpha e beta minus 1 over 2 e dot e chronicle delta alpha beta if you do the same thing for the magnetic field b you will get the same structure with the c square factor you will get b divergence of b b cross curl of b of alpha component you will have the same only thing instead of e alpha you will write b alpha and so on so the quantity under the derivative is called as a maxwell stress tensor so that is coded at t alpha beta it is called maxwell stress tensor And that is equal to epsilon zero e alpha beta plus c square b alpha b beta minus one over two e dot e plus c square b dot b chronicle delta alpha beta so here we have the epsilon zero we insert epsilon zero there therefore b terms have the c square so let us put all things together on the left hand side we find that the rate of the mechanical plus field momentums that is equal to d over dt p mechanical plus p field so p field is nothing but the volume integral of the momentum density on the right hand side we have but we have this and that is equal to summation to the beta the volume integral of del x beta t alpha beta x. So take this term and take this term, take the volume integral and that will be that. If you look at the summation for beta, free index is alpha, therefore there should be the alpha component of that. So we have some kind of equation there that is telling us the that is telling us that the total force on the system is equal to uh, divergence of the Maxwell stress tensor. If you use the divergence theorem and if you take the one integral you can convert this to the, uh, to the surface integral using the divergence theorem and that becomes to the following summation through the beta t alpha beta 
and beta dE. L is the unit vector of the surface. So this is the volume integral and that is the surface. So what could be the unit of the T alpha beta uh, dE? Of course that should be a that integral should be um, derivative, uh, th that should be force, so altogether this should be force. But if you look at that uh, T alpha beta and beta, what is this? What is this? Left hand side is the force. There should be what? Momentum per second per area, some kind of a momentum flux through a closed surface. Why? Because if you call this as a momentum per area per second, if you take the surface integral, you will find that the momentum per second, that is the force. So that tells you that the following. If you have a surface and at the surface if you can calculate the T alpha beta and T alpha beta is depending on the electric field and magnetic field, you can calculate that the uh, force per area per second at that surface and if you take the if you integrate through the surface there should be the total force on the system so a very simple example you can study is this you can study two examples by yourself So take this as a easy homeworks, very easy homeworks. One of them, one of them say that you have some electric field at the some surface here. Find the pressure here. Pressure means that what? Force per area. So basically you will calculate this term. So your unit vector will be the, you have the unit vector, you have the electric field, uniform, and you suppose you have a hypothetical surface, you can find that this pressure on that surface. And another example, it's a nice uh, thing to study. You have the two point charge, you have the electric fields you have only electric fields you can calculate that the force between them Coulomb force using the Maxwell stress tensor how you do choose it, it between a surface and this surface at the center is a plane and goes to infinity here and calculate that the calculate that the Maxwell stress tensor on that surface if, if these boundaries when the boundaries goes to infinity stress tensor goes to zero because the point charges has no dependence as electric field at the infinity. But uh, on here you will calculate that the T alpha beta using the fields. So you know that the fields at the center you know, you know that they have the normal vector to the surface all you do calculate this 
and uh, find the force. So basically what you are going to do if you call this is the z-axis at the center do you have x component or y component? No, only e z component. So only uh, you have alpha and beta will be what? Z z. Other components will be zero. You have B field? No, all B will be cancel cancelled. That. What is your uh, normal vector to the surface? Z. Then you can calculate this integral. You can calculate the T alpha beta and the area. I advise to use that the cylindrical coordinates or polar coordinates. So I use a simple polar, polar coordinates here. It's the area here. And evaluate this. Look at the left hand side. You have the magnetic field. Do you have magnetic field? No. Therefore P field is zero. What is left? P mechanical. So dP over dt on the left and you will calculate the, this in terms of the uh, momentum uh, flux, integral of the momentum flux through the surface and you will find that the Coulomb force eventually. So you have two little homeworks. One is the you calculate that the pressure on the any arbitrary surface if you have an E field alone and then calculate that the force between these two you have two point charges. Now, the next thing to start the discussion uh, to the plane waves in the non-conducting medium, but I don't want to do this because I'll do and I will not be able to finish. I can discuss at the moment why we needed to do uh, momentum of the fields. I did a lot of derivation Okay, I look, to, I take that the Lorentz force, I write the current density and what charge density in terms of fields and find something. But in very simple manner, why needed to the momentum of the field could be the following. Suppose without any, any calculation, suppose a charge is moving and suppose that another charge is moving. What is the force on this one due to that one? So if they are moving. The force on this one due to the first one could be but due to the but Coulomb force if they are positive that is simply repulsive. This is let's say electrostatic force. Okay? That is repulsive. Since this is moving this charge is moving. Can produce a magnetic field. With respect to the observer here, it will produce magnetic field. What will be the direction of the magnetic field with the right hand rule? Think about a wire. If the wire is carrying some current with the uh, Ampere's law, but by a sword law, you can calculate with the right hand rule, you can determine the magnetic field. What is the magnetic field? On this part is what? Inside or, or outside the board? Which one? Outside. So here B is outside. Charge is moving. What is the V cross B? What is the V cross B? What is the V cross B? B is outside. V is here. So V cross B is up. Okay? Am I correct? B is outside, we, we cross B outside. This is the magnetic force. Now look at the forces here due to the other charge. So these are moving. And again this, this charge here will act as a some electrostatic force. Is these two forces our balance? Yes. This F is down, F is up. Okay? For this one, the force due to the electrostatic force on here should be what? In this direction. Look at the magnetic field. If the charge is moving in this way, so with the right hand rule, rule magnetic field should be inside the board. So we here. So what is the V cross B? 
What is the V cross V in that case? V is done, V inside, V cross V. I think, hmm? yes, you are right. Yeah, they should be here. That will be magnetic. Now, as an overall, are we obeying the Newton's third law, action reaction? The total force here is not cancelled here. Okay, for electrostatic, there wasn't any problem that cancels us, but for the magnetic one, no. So, therefore, this is a very simple example why we needed, why we needed the uh, momentum of the electric and magnetic fields. So, we are not satisfying in this simple example to do what? Newton's laws also. So, although Newton's laws are for the gravity, but the action reaction should be worked. So, you can replace the fields of 1 over r square sources are the charges in, instead of uh, masses. So that is a qualitative approach why we need uh, uh, we need uh, fields. Now so let us so since I have a time 15 minutes I can start to the uh, chapter 7 uh, plane waves in a uh, non conducting medium. So, in this chapter, we will look at the applications of the Maxwell's equations. Basically, that will be reflection and refraction. And you did this in detail, I think, in the third year class. So, I want to go over quickly. Uh, then we will study the behavior of the electromagnetic waves near the conductor and we will study the, the electromagnetic waves in the guide, which is called waveguide. So, in non-conducting medium, Suppose that there is no any charge density and current density. The situation is the following. We have the Maxwell's equations. Del dot V is equal to zero. Del dot V is equal to zero. Curl of E del V over del T. And curl of H is equal to del D over del T. No sources. So, current density is equal to zero and the charge density is equal to zero. So, the medium have electric permittivity and magnetic permeability. B is equal to mu H. One of the things, I am going to derive a quickly homogeneous wave equation and introduce the solution. Solution is the plane waves. We will study those things in undergraduate well in oscillations, waves and electromagnetic theory. So, I will quickly go over all those things. So, All forms of B or E has frequency dependence are exponential e to the minus i omega t. So this is the frequency and the frequency at the same frequency is oscillating the waves. So for del B over del T, I I can write minus i omega times the same quantity exponential. Okay, so for all Maxwell's equations here, the time dependent forms are in the form of e to the i omega t, e to the minus i omega t. 
So therefore, the time derivatives, partial time derivatives, includes minus i omega t times the itself. So basically, that tells us that the Faraday's equations turns to be curl of E minus i omega b and the Ampere's law turns to be curl of H is what? Minus minus plus i omega d. So say that the all fields are oscillating same frequency and b and the same time dependence. So then the equations we have could be combined very easily. What is the rule of the combine? In order to combine these two, take the curl of this or take the curl of the other one. So take the curl of E. What is the curl of E? Curl of E minus I omega B is equal to zero. So take time take the curl of both sides. Curl of curl of E. Curl of B you will get. And we have the double curl, so very nice expression for that. That is equal to gradient of divergence of E minus Laplacian of E. Instead of curl of B, what I can write? What is the curl of B? So H is equal to B over mu zero. D is equal to epsilon E. Let's take the mu up and that turns out to be turns out to be plus i omega mu i omega uh, epsilon e. So again b is equal to h is equal to b over mu d is equal to epsilon e. So you have mu epsilon here. You have minus i and there's one more minus that becomes plus i and i minus and for the that term you will obtain <laughs> i and i minus that will be minus mu epsilon omega square e and that is minus Laplacian E make plus here and divergence of E is equal to zero because we assume that no sources. So this is the homogeneous wave equation. So if you do the same thing for the magnetic field you are going to obtain the same thing. So you will get the same structure. Laplacian B mu epsilon omega square V will be the zero. How you are going to do? In that case, you will take the curl of the uh, modified Ampere's law and to relate this to. So we have the wave equation and what else we have? So the solutions of the wave equation could be written as a plane waves. I'm passing this quickly. E could be a complex amplitude e to the i k n dot x and is the propagation direction x is the spatial location minus i omega t for b we have some amplitude 
e to the i k and that x minus i omega t. So if you substitute this equation to wave equations, what you are going to obtain? So if you take the double derivative Laplacian of this, and if you substitute this there, so you can see automatically it will satisfy. But in order to satisfy, it should satisfy the dispersion relation. That dispersion relation is the relation with the k and omega. The relation between the wave number and the frequency is the dispersion relation of the wave, and here mu epsilon. So indeed, if you substitute this equation here, the solution of the plane waves here, so you will obtain what? From the Laplacian, you will obtain ik, ik, that will be minus k square times of exponential. And here, you have the same things here. So you can take the joint parentheses, then that will come up, but ik, ik is minus k square, and minus k square plus mu epsilon omega square in the common parentheses have to be zero and you will obtain that. So this is the dispersion relation. So that is obtained just inserting this to the here. And similarly, if you are looking at the uh, wave equation for the magnetic field, take the plane wave solution and insert that, you will obtain that. Basically, you will obtain the following. K square plus mu minus k square plus mu epsilon omega square is equal to zero. If you take this plane wave solution and insert the wave equation, you will obtain this. And that tells you that the k should be related. Uh, omega is the square root of mu epsilon. And the relation between the k and omega is also important. You know that the omega over k, what is the omega over k? What is the omega over k? Frequency per group or uh, phase velocity? Phase velocity. If you take the derivative, that is group velocity. But for particular case, they are both the same. For electromagnetic waves, they are the same. So we call this as a phase velocity. And that is equal to 1 over square root of mu epsilon. If it is in, if we are in medium, if the waves in the medium, mu is mu zero, epsilon is epsilon zero. That is but the speed of light in the in the so basically, we can write this in the following. Uh, so let me write in the following C over N. N is the refractive index. And where N is here, nothing but mu epsilon over mu zero epsilon zero. If the refractive index is one, the phase velocity is the speed velocity, curve velocity, you can take the derivative of the omega with respect to the k, you will get the uh, same thing. But that will not be the same in the waveguides. There will be different. So look at, let us look at here. C is, these are the same thing. Okay, This is square root of 1 over mu 0 epsilon 0. And that is equal to 1 over n is mu 0 epsilon 0 over mu epsilon. Mu 0 epsilon 0 cancel. So they are the same thing. Okay, This is the refractive index of the medium refractive index of the medium. So all information is coming from, we have the wave equation, we have the solution. If you insert the solution, you are obtaining a dispersion relation. And that is dispersion relation means that the relation between the wave number and the frequency is commonly used in more complex cases in the plasma physics. You have more, much more complicated things. Why? Because sometimes you have sources if you have sources, the things becomes more complicated. But you need to have uh, some solution, and you, you have to find the relation between the omega and wave number. And if you know this, you know that the phase velocity. If you know this, you can calculate also what group velocity. Now, I can tell you very quickly other things. So. Inserting the electric and magnetic fields to the wave equation, we obtain the dispersion relation, we calculate the phase velocity. But what happened if we insert this E and P to the Maxwell's equations? 
So everything says are some important things. So take the wave equation, insert the, this one. What is what you are going to obtain? Divergence of B is equal to zero. If you take the B as an exponential solution, substitute there, and what you are going to obtain? Do you see what you are going to obtain? So, if you take the derivative with respect to x, let's say this is one dimension, so only one. Take the derivative here, so then you have i k n that product B will be zero. So basically that equation will tell you that n dot B is equal to zero. Other one will tell you that what? n dot E equal to zero. n is the propagation direction. And what else? You can use both of them. So it doesn't matter which you use. What does it tell you? This one. So, instead, if you have a plane wave, so go to the undergraduate, third year, probably you did. Instead of curl operator, you can write curl operator for plane waves that is equal to IK cross. Do you remember? No. So, otherwise, go to the Griffiths, look at the derivation or do the things by yourself. So, curl operator for the plane waves, if you take the uh, one of them and the curl of this you will obtain the ik cross and that will tell you that this should be b should be square root of mu epsilon and cross e so let me say try do it for you so basically this operator goes to ik cross h is equal to b over mu and that was equal to minus i omega epsilon epsilon d and maybe I should look at the other way around so uh, maybe I should look at the above this doesn't go this one I am sorry that this goes to that one so again for that one you can say that curl of e i k cross i k cross e is equal to minus del over del t that is minus 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 i omega b So that is equal to that is equal to k is equal to what? What is the k or what is the uh, k? So i's will be cancelled out. So what is the k over omega? K over omega. Look at here, k over omega. So if you divide the things to the there, you will obtain k over omega, and k over omega is the square root of mu epsilon. K has a direction n hat cross E is equal to B. So you obtain this. So I will review this later, next time. So maybe you haven't get at the point, okay? So do as a, your exercise and I will discuss this later. But the bottom line is the following. These Maxwell's equations are telling us that the n, E, n, n, E are orthogonal to each other. And this one, Faraday's law or the modified Ampere's law, are telling us that the n also orthogonal to the e, n cross e. Okay? So that means that I'll discuss next time propagation direction of the electromagnetic waves. Electric field and the magnetic field are mutually orthogonal to each other. And that is coming from that the solution of the wave equation inserted to the Maxwell's equations. So I'll come to this point later on, okay? But for the next time, please work on that the curl operator is equal to IK cross if you have the plane waves, okay?
This is commonly used, so we will use this in the radiation also. Okay? So, cur will be replaced IK cross when we are working in the plane waves. So, we will come to this time to time. So, last part, I will do it again for you. And once I'll start, the, I will finish the uh, refraction and reflection, and I will start to study that the behavior of the electromagnetic waves uh, near the conductor. So, that's all today. <laughs>